Welcome to part two of the video for the giant journal page I was making. I really don't have a title. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I went from the background from last week to this one. This is my completed journal page. And I'm just, I... In the video I show you what I'm doing and some of the stuff is sped up and sometimes I cut so you don't see like every single brush stroke and that's intentional because I want this to be an example for your creativity. I don't want you to copy it and do exactly the same thing so it looks exactly the same as this one. A lot of my writing's obscured because the journal page, it's just talking about the funk that I've been in lately and how everything's like doom and gloom and rain clouds and then I kind of have like this lighter sunburst that's coming up of me figuring out what's going on and what I need to do and what has to happen. So there isn't a whole bunch of writing on there and some of it might not make sense to you. Everything has a meaning. I don't just write words on there because they look cool or they're in or whatever. Um, they're gonna start sanding again. It was a really personal journal page to make and it's always um, intimidating to do a journal page in front of a camera and share it with everyone. So I really appreciate all of you who have commented and liked the first part and have sent me emails or questions uh, regarding what I'm using. And I really hope that this second part, which is a lot more hands-on technique than the first part, really inspires you to get up and try new things and experiment. And you can come along with me while I succeed and fail at what I'm trying to do on my journal page. Just have fun look at the techniques, try them out yourself, practice, 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 that's what your journal is for, and really make sure that when you're working in your journal, you are saying something, you are expressing something, you're not just doing it to make art that looks cool or whatever. So just get deep and personal, and I'll see you guys next week with another fun video. So yeah, bye! Here is my page that I created in the first video and it's curled a little which is fine and there are certain areas on it that I really like so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and find those areas that I like and I'm just gonna circle them with a pencil Space down here, I like. Maybe some right in here. And up here. And I'm just using, I just grabbed a random colored pencil. I have a bucket. I love the Color Soft and the um, Ink Tense pencils. And so they're just like in a bucket. I do that as my first step when I sit down to work on top of this because what usually happens when we work on a journal page is we put down pieces like paper and images and elements and I like these areas so I want to keep them because I want to be able to see them later on. So I just kind of like want to be aware of the areas and that also kind of gives you a little bit of direction. Like I can see that a lot of them are lining up right here so I could do something there that isn't covered with paper. I like the whole background, but, um, you know, I want to journal on it as well. You know, and then there's areas like this area over here that I really don't like, so that would be covered. And it kind of helps you, like I said, find a direction that you're going to move in and might help you figure out what you want to do. So what I am going to start with is there's this pattern on one of my mini binders that I have that I really like and I drew it on a different project and I'm going to actually put it in this area with the pink and I'm just going to use my white pencil to doodle it in and then I'm going to go over it with paint and this just makes it easier to draw. just kind of 
drawn it in. And you can see one of my circled areas is in the middle of that, so that'll be saved, I guess you could say. And then I'm going to pick a color to paint. look in the actual color here because even though this is dried and it's been you know a few days since I it was actually made um, it's gonna still pick up these colors of the Adirondack so even though I kind of started with this yellow green white color it's gonna turn a different color by the time I'm done all the way over here and my guide is just a guide, so I kind of have gone off of it now. So even though I've gone over it with a layer or two, you can see that it's not really a greeny or or greeny yellow anymore. It's picked up the blue and the and the pink and everything that was underneath there. So I'm gonna go over it really fast with some white. So it's kind of like a, a honeycomb effect on there, which is really cool. But like up in here, you can see the pink has really gotten into it. And it has preserved, you know, portions that I really liked. Like, I like this part here, so I'm just going to add another one. So now I've kind of saved a couple of those areas that I really liked with just a pattern like that. Another way is I can go in and draw... I'll move this up over here. I can draw... You know, I circled this before with the pencil. See how circling these things has kind of started to give me some direction as to where I'm going to be going? You know, I already did this part, which saved a bunch of different areas on here, and I've done this down here. Now I have three over here, and there's a couple different things I can do to kind of rescue those. What I'm going to do, actually, is grab some paper, so find some papers, like clouds and clouds, and the same kind of hue of green in that one. So I'm going to kind of guesstimate, like, how big this is. So I'm going to be like, just draw that on the piece of paper, and I'm going to cut a circle bigger than it, and then cut the middle out. And I'm going to try to cut it out so that I can use the middle for something later on. I wanted to put that, like, right here. That's up there. And then I can actually, I think, cut a middle out of this and use another one here. So, save that bit. And then I'm going to try this paper, because I think that would be a really kind of cool contrast. So, that one's about yay big. So, like that. I'm going to actually stitch the circles on, and I'm not going to show the actual sewing, but I do have a darning foot on my sewing machine. But I'm going to take a break um, and sew these on, and that's what's great about this being a bigger page that's not on a, in a journal. But even in a journal, you can do it. You've noticed <clears throat> I flipped it over because I kind of was like sitting here and I was moving around. I actually like it this way more. And I added another 
circle here because I had a whole bunch over here and not any over here and I needed to balance out what I was doing. I do like it the original way too. So I think I, I'll keep it this way. So as you can see I stitched these over here and then I added one more over here just to kind of balance everything out. I cut out my pieces and this is all kind of like prep almost for doing one more layer of paint and a little bit of collage. I remember I didn't like this part down here, so I'm actually going to cover it up. Okay, I'm going to do one more layer of paint on here. And I haven't added any glaze, it's just a color. I'm using, <coughs> excuse me, colors that are a little more translucent, so you still see... the cool stuff behind it. I'm just adding in white and a darker magenta to kind of just give it a little more depth instead of just being one solid color. I'm going to use the magenta to kind of give a little bit of a drop shadow to the honeycomb shape. I like random areas like this of just added color. And you can see it's kind of doing that simple little bit really starts to pull the whole thing together into an actual cohesive page. So on the other side, I want to stay in the same color family, but I don't want it necessarily to be as dark. And I'm still going to use the same magenta though. So this red is a little brighter on top of everything. And it's actually turning orange from where it mixes with the green that's on the background. So I'm using a little more water on this side to pull out that green. So that gives it, it kind of looks more like a cohesive kind of piece rather than just just hanging out there. And I'm going to turn these into little thingies. I want to do that just to highlight the, they're not really flowers, I don't know, I draw a lot of flowers on things and I kind of want to draw different things. And I'm going to spread some white. I have some stamps that I'm going to use. And they're actually my stamps from Paper Rag Studios. And I just used that as a mask so I could just keep stamping across the top without going into that circle-y thing. And I'm not really fancy with rubber stamps. I usually just use black when I stamp with things. So I just kind of stamping all over. A little bit. 
it's nice to have these word stamps because I'm going to do some writing on here with ink. And these, I don't know, you just can see through them. Because there's a lot of red and there's blue on the bottom and like everything else, I want to balance it. So I'm going to actually paint these houses blue. And this is one of those instances where the difference between a heavy body and a fluid make all the difference. If I did this with my fluid of this exact same color from the exact same company, it wouldn't be nearly as opaque as this is. And I really want it to be solid. Yesterday, my camera decided to overheat, so I've edited together everything else, and this is day three of filming, and we're going to finish this page today. So it's kind of curling on the edges, which it normally does, and it, you think about, like, if it was in a journal, it would be bound on this side, so it would be pretty flat. So I'm going to do a couple things um, to finish this page off. One of them is something cool that I'm going to try, because that's basically what we do in these videos, is you watch me play around and experiment with new things. And that is, I'm going to do this corner, and I have, this is white spray ink, spray whatever. I'm going to try it, see how it works. I have my stencil, and we'll see how this is. I forgot, you have to like... Wait. The pump in this isn't the best. You have to wait a little bit between sprays. Okay. That's all we're going to do with that. And that actually looks kind of cool. So I'm going to blot it with... But lightly, because it looks like it's not totally staying down. And then I'm just going to flip this over here. It looks pretty cool. Like you can see the ink. It just doesn't spray in a very nice mist. It's something that I have to play with more since it's pretty new. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to doodle and draw on my page here. The only thing that's wet on here is actually the spray ink in these corners, but everything else is dry. So I do have my Copics that I'm going to use on the drier areas. I also have my Sume ink for Sume A drawing that I use. It's not waterproof. So I always, it's the last layer because if you work over it, it'll start spreading. This is my fountain pen with Noodler's ink. This is waterproof. And then I have my whiteout pen that I've been using lately. I'm actually going to trace this. Come on, come on. There we go. And this is just, actually, I used a piece of chipboard in a die cut machine to make this kind of shape, stencil, mask thing. I love the whiteout pen because it, it's kind of like painting and it works over anything. It's pretty cool. So I'm going to actually use it just kind of randomly all over the page. Come in some doors. something these honeycomb shapes they're cool looking but I think they're kind of getting lost so I'm gonna chase the inside of them with white 